Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brooke, that gratitude guy with another special guest on my gratitude podcast interview. And I was thinking about this young man today. I've known him a, a long, long time. Neither one of us could be that old to know each other over 50 years. It's just crazy. But met him back in the 60s. It has a, had a huge influence on my life as a teacher at one point and then a very close and dear friend ever since then. Bob Crisetto. Bob, welcome to the podcast. Well, good morning, David. Well, now, so what we're doing on this, I think I kind of told you as well as a number of special guests, is that I'm kind of asking people some questions where people that I know that are really dynamic and juggle a lot of balls and do a lot of things, kind of how they're handling some things. So I've got several questions for you with the intent being that as this goes out to my mailing list, to my YouTube subscribers and so forth, is that they might get some ideas from somebody that uh, uh, thinks maybe a little more outside the box or just a different way of thinking. So first question, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? Well, I, for me, after about a week, when things appear to be bad, I've always looked for, for the opportunity. Uh, and, uh, you know, the opposite of danger with the Chinese is opportunity. And uh, mm. immediately started to look at ways that I could expand on my business because there's going to be uh, a new normal. It's not... Uh, it's not going to be the same. And instead of fighting it, just go with the flow. Yeah, yeah, that's very, very true. And you know me, of course, as the gratitude guy. I talk about gratitude all the time. Did you notice, what are you most grateful for? Did it change before the pandemic to where it is now, these last five or six weeks? Has it been the same thing? What's at the top of your list for being the most grateful for? Right now, it's, it's that there's a beautiful sunny day outside. For anybody that lives in Seattle, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I, I use my gratitude journal every day and number one is my health. Yeah. Uh, I, the last thing anybody wants to have to do at 84 years of age is go to the hospital. Yeah. 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 That's for sure. Yeah. And, and where would you be without health too? I think I never try to tell people what to write in their gratitude journal, but if health isn't in the first top one or two or three, I'm not sure what's more important than that. So, but somebody like you who's always been very, very active and done a lot of things, what sort of thought or tidbit or idea might you have for somebody that's stuck at home and uh, is used to being out and about in terms of maybe things they can do to occupy their time where they're kind of housebound now? Well, one, one thing um, I do is get out and walk twice a day. Mm -hmm. and. Um, do um, some simple calisthenics, do some basic push-ups, things of that sort. I find that, uh, uh, however, I am napping more often, I might add, uh, mm. uh, during this thing, uh, this pandemic as well. But it, it is frustrating. Frustrating. I'm very grateful that I have a wife that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, I, I can't even think of a spat that we've had in the last uh, 30 days. So we're very fortunate. Wow. I, and uh, the other thing is I'm a wonderful spouse because I let her beat me at cards. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I tell you, some of the best uh, things about this in the last 30 or 40 days, I'm sure some relationships have gotten better and maybe some have gone another direction. Who knows? But, but so for somebody, again, it, it's never mattered. One of the things you said to me a long time ago, among many things, is uh, I like to hang out with younger people and it keeps me having a youthful attitude and energy and outlook and so forth. And so well, kind of with that in mind, what thought do you have, maybe for you, but also other people, of what people can do maybe right now to hit the ground running when this is over? Because we know this is going to end. We just don't know when and we don't know what to go at degree a vaccine and so forth. But any thoughts on some of the things they can do now to sort of be really prepared for when it's over and they're back out on the, in, the, in the real world again? Well, I think look forward and see, uh, try to anticipate what the opportunities are going to go are going to be for you when things open up again, mm -hmm. because the world is changing. Yeah, uh, I uh, heard uh, last night or listened to Sean Hannity uh, in his interview with uh, Governor Cuomo, and mm -hmm. he uh, made a point that just resonated with me. In fact, it was so good that I called my wife in to listen to it. Oh, wow. That is, this is like 9/11, mm -hmm. uh, and that. Who would have ever thought before 9-11 you'd ever have to take your shoes off to go uh, at the airport? Who would ever thought you'd be screened? Who would ever thought that they'd open up your bags and search everything? 
Right. And uh, now that's the new normal. And it's going to be the same thing with this pandemic. It'll never be the same. That's true. That's true. And great point. And last question is, you look back over your life and do you have sort of a quote or a philosophy or a thought that's kind of always been that sort of guided you that you could maybe put at the top of the list as sort of an overarching approach to life, whether it's through a pandemic like this or just in life in general, you kind of use as a hallmark for you? Well, something that changed my life about 30 years ago, Dr. Fred Cheney told me to make my strengths productive and my weaknesses irrelevant. Mm. And that's something I wish I knew when I was 18 years of age. It would have dramatically altered my life. And it's helped uh, guide all of my children into careers and relationships that are very productive. Yeah. So yeah. that's another way of putting it is uh, uh, instead of make your strengths productive and your weaknesses irrelevant is feed your strengths and starve your weaknesses, which yeah. is the opposite of what they do in schools. Yeah, which is a good point. And, and just to the previous question about what can people do to hit the ground running? Well, this gives them a lot of time to maybe start thinking about things where maybe they can reassess what they're really good at and make those strengths productive, as you said, and not worry about that other stuff. And when this does, when people get to go back out into society and get back to jobs or whatever, that they'll maybe even be more effective as a result of this. And I think too, one of the things that not a lot of people talk about, there's a lot of negative news and negative everything, but I do believe there'll be a ton of silver linings that come out of this and I just look at even something like this with Zoom with you, and there's my bud, and I see him, and he's like two feet away from me versus, uh, you know, you used to have to drive and you have to go coffee or whatever it might be. Just a lot of the tech ways that technology is making this a lot better as well. Well, you're, you're right on. And as you know, I've been in network marketing for 25 years, one of mm -hmm. my profit centers. And this uh, Zoom has changed dramatically what we're going to be doing, what we're presently doing, and what we're going to be doing in the future. Yeah, because people aren't going to want to be meeting in groups. People aren't going to want to be hugging the way they were in the past. Yeah, it's all changed. You're also you're absolutely right. And I even think not only that in groups and, and social distancing, but I think of people I've had that are good friends and I decided to go have coffee with them and drove an hour out to meet them, had the coffee and drove back an hour and spent three hours for what would be just a one hour talk. And on Zoom, you're done. You press the button and it's time to go do whatever you need to do. So it's very productive and very efficient. Well, and one of the things that I think in the question you asked before, one of the things that keeps me going is I have seven children and mm -hmm. 17 grandchildren and FaceTime and Zoom are fabulous ways to stay yeah. in touch. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I've got a two-year-old grandson that wouldn't even know who I was. Yeah, that's true. That's a great, great point. Look at that connection. That's excellent. Well, just as I thought, a number of great gems and nuggets there. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Well, thank you, David George. Adios. Talk to you later.